Hello friends, welcome back to our channel. So today we'll see a one more concept in uh, algorithms that is a disjoint set operations weighted union. So in our previous session, we are discussing about the disjoint sets. What is the disjoint set? So if you consider two sets, if there is no common element between these two sets, then we can say that set as a disjoint set and there are different operations that can be performed on disjoint sets. So that is a simple union, simple find and weighted union and collapsing find. So in our previous session, we have discussed about the simple union and simple find. So union means uh, combining the elements from both the sets, two different sets. Okay. And find means it will find the index that root element of that particular set okay we can call it as a set representative so whatever the root element in that particular set so that will be returned in the find operation so that we have seen in our previous session now we'll see the third operation that is weighted union weighted union so there is a slight difference between the simple union and the weighted union. So in the simple union, what we have done, what we have done, so just we are uh, merging two different sets and forming a single union. Okay. So we are merging one set with a, another set. So merging means here union, right? So, and we said that the root element, the parent node of root element will be minus one there. But here in the weighted union, the name itself indicates the root, the parent of root element will be the number of nodes of that particular element or that particular set. Okay. For example, consider S1 is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4 and S2 is equal to some 5, 6 and 7. So we know that there are no common elements in between these two sets, no common elements. So that means S1 intersection S2 is equal to 5. 5 means an empty set. Okay. So the, we can say S1 and S2 are the disjoint sets. So these two comes under disjoint sets. Disjoint sets. Now, if you want to give a union S2, S1 union S2, that means combining both the elements. So which should be given as a child to which set? So which will be the parent and which will be the child? So simply, if you perform this one in weighted union, weighted union, so if number of elements in S1 is greater than number of elements in S2. That means S1 is having more number of elements than S2. So here S1 is having how many elements? Four elements. And S2 is having how many elements? Three elements. So here this example reaches, right? S1 is greater than S2. Then S1 will be the parent and S2 will be the child. So we have to insert or merge the S2, the elements of S2 to S1. That means the number of elements, which set is having the more number of elements, that will become the parent. And the, the set which is having the less number of elements, that will become the child element. Right? For example, consider the same thing. Okay, so remember this one. If number of elements in S1 is greater than number of elements in S2, S1 will be the parent and S2 will be the child. Else, else means if number of elements in S1 is less than number of elements in S2, so now more number of elements are in S2. So S2 will be the parent and S1 will be the child. So I will give you an example. Let us consider this one. So, as we discussed in our previous session, the set is represented with a tree structure. Set is represented with a tree structure. For example, i is the root element. 
and here 5 is the root element. So S1 can be denoted as 1 which is a parent of 2 which is a parent of 3 which is a parent of 4 and the next one 5 which is a root or a parent of 6 and it is also a parent of 7. Now the number of elements this is a S1 and this is a S2. Now what happens S1 union S2. So which will be the parent? S1 is having 4 elements. S2 is having 3 elements. So S1 is greater than S2. S1 is greater than S2. Right? Then S1 will be the parent. S2 will be the child. So what happens? 1 having a child 2, 3, 4 and 5 will be the another child. 5 will be the another, another child which will be having a, two more children 6 and 7. So this is how we will perform the union operation. So only one thing. So that means based upon the number of nodes in that particular set we will be deciding the parent set and the child set. Okay. Now what happens? What is the root? Okay. What is the parent of that particular root? See, I will erase and I will show you. For S1, for S1, the elements are I and P of I. Let us consider I as an element, P of I as a parent. So, how many uh, elements are there? Four elements. One, two, three and 4. So total 4 elements are there. Similarly, S2 is having i and p of i. i is the number of elements and p of i is a parent of that element. So 5, 6 and 7. Now consider the parent. So parent of 1. Here you can see 1 is the root node. 1 is the root node. Then in normal simple union we consider the parent of root node will be minus 1. But here the parent of root node will be the count of that particular set. So parent of i will be minus count of i. That means that particular set. Okay, that particular set. So how much it will be? Minus 1 and how many nodes are there? 4 nodes. So it will be minus 4. So minus 4 is the parent of node 1. So in simple union we are giving minus 1 as a parent, right? But here we are giving the number of count, okay? Then parent of 2, it is 1. Parent of 3, again it's 1. Parent of 4, again it's 1. Coming to here, the second set. Okay, the second set. So, coming to the second set, parent of 5. 5 is a root node. So, if it is a root node, what we have to do? We have to count the number of elements of that particular set. How many elements are there? 3 elements. 5, 6, 7. So, the parent of 5 will be minus 3. As it is having some 3 elements. Parent of 6 is 5. Parent of 7 is, again, 5. Parent of 7 is now, what happens? See, S1 union S2. So, what are the elements? 1, 2, 3, 4, sorry. 4, 5, 6, and 7. And similarly, we need to write the parent. We need to write the parent of all these nodes. Right now, what happens? Parent of one, parent of one will be, will be so. Here we are performing the union operation, so these two becomes this one. Okay, now parent of one, how many nodes are there now? One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Total seven nodes are there. So, what happens here? Minus seven, minus seven, right? 
So that means what we have to do if P of I is greater than P of J. Okay. If P of I is greater than P of J. So for example, here it is I and here it is J. Okay. I and J. So here you can check minus 4 greater than minus 3. True or false? False. That implies so J is having less number of elements. J is having less number of elements. So what we have to do? We have to make the parent of J to I. Okay. So we have to make a parent of sorry, parent of I to J. Right? See what happens? 1, it will be now total elements are I will go with this in the next one. Okay. Yeah. So what happens here? Total 7 elements. So it will be minus 7. And what about the parent of 2? It remains same. 1, 1, 1. And what about the parent of 5? Parent of 5. So parent of 5 becomes parent of 5 becomes 1. Okay. Here you can observe. Parent of 5 becomes 1. And parent of 6 becomes 5 and 7 becomes 5 itself. So in this case, let us see, for example, i, j, i value is minus 4, j value is minus 3. Okay, so let it be p of i is equal to count and similarly p of j is equal to minus count of j. Okay, minus count of j. So you can observe, this is minus count of i means total it will be minus 4 and it will be minus 3. So if you perform the union operation, if you perform the union operation, what will be the total count value? So that will be, let us, let us take temp is equal to p of i plus P of J, which will become minus 7. You can observe total 7 elements are there. Total 7 elements are there. And the, this minus 7 will be the parent of the root. Now we have to decide what is the root. Either S1 or S2. So for that decision, what we are doing? Simply you can check if P of I in this example. We will we'll check in this example. Is less than P of J. P of i less than P of j. P of i is minus 4. Okay. So here it is minus 4 less than minus 3. What happens? True. True. That means you can see i is having more number of elements. So here don't confuse about the less than and greater than symbol. Because here we are saying P of i is less than P of j. That implies this is the negative values. Minus 4 less than minus 3 is obviously true. So, 4 elements are having in first set, 3 elements we are having in second set. So, what we have to do, we have, what we have to change, we have to change the parent, okay. Parent of J is equal to I. So, parent of J will be I. So, what is the parent of J? Pa parent of what is the j here? 5. Parent of 5 will be i. i means 1. Okay. Parent of 5 will be 1. You can observe now. And similarly, what about the parent of i now? Parent of i will be 10. After completion of union, it will be minus 7. Okay. Hope you understood. Check this condition. P of i less than P of j. That means minus 4 less than minus 3. That implies so this implies set 2. Set 2 is having less number of elements and I, and I set is having more number of elements. Then simply what we have to do, we have to initialize I to as a parent of J. So what we have done here like this, right? I, J is 5. Parent of 5 will be 1. Parent of 5 will be 1. 1 is nothing but I. And parent of I will be Temp. Temp is nothing but total number of elements, minus 7. So here we got it. Else. Else. That means, if, if P 
of i is greater than p of j that means here we are having three elements here we are having four elements what we what it becomes s2 becomes the parent s1 becomes the child so what happens here p of i is equal to j we have to initialize j as a parent of i so we are merging s1 to s2 we are merging s1 to s2 and then p of j this is the root node which is nothing but a temp so these are the two conditions we need to take care while implementing the weighted union so only one thing we have to remember if so s1 if you want to combine or if you want to perform the union operation between s1 and s2 first we have to count the number of elements in s1 and s2 and which set is having the highest number of elements that becomes the root or that becomes the parent and the less number of elements set will becomes the child so that we have to update the the va values the parent nodes right and as the name itself indicates a weighted union the root node the parent of root node will be the number of elements in that particular set now i'll write the algorithm here so that you can understand so i'll erase this one i'll write here algorithm weighted union which takes the values i and j set so initially p of i is equal to minus count of i similarly p of j is equal to minus count of j so here we are taking the number of elements now what we are doing we are just combining these two things p of i plus p of j so after performing the union operations we will be getting the total value now what we have to do so we have to check the condition if p of i is less than p of j that means p of i is having a more number of elements than p of j then what happens we have to initialize this one p of j is equal to i that means we are assigning i value as a parent of pj that means we are appending the second set to the first set and what will be the i value p of i is equal to temp p of i is equal to temp so i'll erase this one also and what about the second that means else else so this means s1 is greater than s2 okay let it be i belongs to s1 and j belongs to s2 so then it becomes p of i is equal to j okay that means so this part s1 is less than s2 that means number of elements of s1 is less than number of elements of s2 now s2 becomes the parent s1 becomes the child so s1 should be union that means merged to s2 so that's why j value will be the parent of p of i and similarly p of j is equal to m which is the parent of root becomes root becomes the total value so this is a simple algorithm for weighted union the only difference between weighted union and the normal union means so here based upon the number of elements of a set we have we are deciding which set should be merged to which set so larger elements set will be the parent lower elements set will be the child so similarly we have to change the parent of each and everything and root uh, the parent of root will be the number of elements of that particular set so we have to remember these points and this is a simple algorithm to implement the weighted union in disjoint sets right so hope you understood this one i'll stop here and if you are having any queries regarding this one feel free to post your doubts in the comment section definitely i will try to clarify all your doubts and if you really enjoyed my session like my session share my session with your friends and don't forget to subscribe to our channel thanks for watching thank you very much